And you may say, okay, what is most accurate? Well, let's look. That one's 21. This one was 14. And this one was 30. This was an over approximation. This was an under approximation. <clears throat> and this seems to be, it sort of strikes a nice distance, or di distance. It sort of strikes a nice balance between the two, doesn't it? But you may still say, well, Ripley, I don't know if this and this balance out. This appears to be a little bit bigger, even with your cruddy drawing. This and this don't seem to be equal. I, I appear to be off. So there's a question. How do I get more accurate? How do I get more accurate? This, by the way, is a question. More accurate. The answer is more n, right? In other words, bigger n, more n. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I guess we could be a little fancier here since it is a math class. <laughs> We're going to call this let n be greater than 4. So in other words, we could probably assume that if I let, say, n equal, let's let it be 8, all right? And we're going to try and do this without doing the drawings. I'm just going to write them up, and then we can plug them in our calculators later. All right, first things first. If n is 8, what is delta x? Well, delta x is always b minus a over n. Remember, f of x is still x squared on the closed interval from 0 to 4. Right? Okay, so delta x is going to be 4 minus 0 over what? 8. So now my thicknesses are one half. So let's set up all of these. All right. We know that area is going to, let's start with the left. We're going to do L sub 8. Each one of the thicknesses is a half. So I'm going to go, now you can kind of visualize what's going on here. I'm doing L sub 8. So for this function, let's at least sketch the function over here without any other rectangles. All right. So for L sub 8, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole bunch of rectangles, in fact, eight of them. And the first one for L sub 8, I'm going to start on the left-hand side. So I know L sub 8 is going to be equal to 1 half times f of 0. That's the first one. Now remember, delta x is a half. So that's how thick each one of these subintervals is. Plus, well, how thick is the second one? It's 1 half, right? I'm grabbing the left-hand side. So this is going to be 1 half times f of one half. I got too many parentheses in there, don't I? Let me erase that. One half times half of a half, right? And then we just keep on going until we get eight of these. So plus one half times f of one, because I just move over a half. I started at zero, I move over a half, I move over another half, right? Plus one half times f of three halves, plus one half times f of 5 halves, whoops, times f of 2, I got ahead of myself. We're halfway home, no pun intended. 1 half times f of 2 plus 1 half times f of 5 halves. How many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 plus 1 half times f of 3 plus 1 half times f of Seven halves. Seven halves gets me to that half or to the left hand interval, the left hand side of the interval from seven and half, seven halves to eight. Now we can plug it in our calculator and set it up. But then again, let's do the m. So we know that the area is equal is approximately equal to m sub eight. Now this one takes a little bit more thought. We're going to have to think about this. So let me draw one of these intervals a little bigger. If I'm starting at zero, right, and the end of my interval is at a half of my first interval, the end of my second interval is at one. Well, where's the middle of this thing? Well, it's at one fourth, right? That's where I'm going to grab the height of my function. So my function goes like this, right? I'm going to go up here and draw my rectangles. Well, where's the next one going to be? Well, it, that's always really simple to do because to get from here to here, I just take one fourth plus delta x. That gets me to the next one, which in this case is delta x is a half, so this ends up being three fourths. So let's set this thing up. Again, I know that all the widths are a half. Now, I'm going to do an advanced move. Notice all of these widths 
are a half, right? And they're all multiplying times these f of values. I can factor them out. So why can't I just write this as one half times? Now let's think. f of one fourth plus f of three fourths, one fourth plus a half, right? Plus f of five fourths. See, we're just getting a little bit more sophisticated with every new move. I know I'm going to need eight of these, right? So f of seven fourths. That's think about it this way. This guy right here is halfway between which two values? Well, it's one and three quarters, so it's halfway between one and a half and two. The next one's going to be f of nine-fourths, which is halfway between two and two and a half. You see what we're doing there? Plus f of eleven-fourths, etc., etc. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, plus f of thirteen-fourths, Plus, i got to hang this guy off the end, sorry, f of 15 fourths. Now, let's double check, because 15 fourths had better be halfway between 3 and a half and 4, and it is, right? Does that make sense? All right, right on, so, right? Because this is, think about it, it's 3 and 3 quarters. It's halfway between 3 and a half and 4, and we're set. Last one, I promise. It's probably driving you guys crazy, but that's okay. Let's make sure that we, <laughs> it's not okay, but you know how it is. Let's do it for our sub a. Okay, again, all of the delta x's are the same width. They're all a half. We got that up here. Don't forget that. Now I'm starting on the right hand side of the interval. So now I'm going over here. So think about it. How tall is your first one going to be? Instead of going off the left hand side, I'm going off the right hand side of the interval. I started at zero. I move over a half. So my first height is going to be f of a half. So this is going to be f of 1 half, right, plus f of 1, plus f of 3 halves, plus f of 2, plus f of 5 halves, plus f of 3, 3, plus f of 7 halves, plus f of 4. And we can count these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And we got them all. Now, what's going to happen if I let n go to infinity, then won't all of these values all head to the same place? If I let n get huge, what's going to happen? Well, let's look at our function one more time. And I know I'm just, I'm getting, I'm what the psychologist called perseveration, <laughs> don't ask me how I know that, is instead of having these big old chunky rectangles that look like this, right, what I've got is, as I let n go to infinity, I end up getting an infinite number, here it comes, you're going to hear this over and over and over, it's going to drive you nuts, of infinitely thin rectangles. So if I want if you look at it, if I let it actually do that, it starts looking very much like the area under the curve. So basically what I can do is I can let the number of rectangles go to infinity, and the way in which we write that is we say, okay, I can let the limit as n goes to infinity of L sub n, right? That's got to be the area. Similarly, wouldn't this also be true? If I let n go to infinity of r sub n, won't I also get the area? I'm still going to end up with the same phenomenon. Similarly, if I let n go to infinity of m sub n. So it doesn't matter if I do left, right, or middle. If I want the exact value of the area, all I have to do is let the number of rectangles go to infinity, and I'm golden. Now, there's a really fancy way of writing this, and I'm going to write it up because it's going to make you feel smart, and it's going to make me feel like I've done my job. It's called a Riemann sum. I think this, it, I forget how to spell his name. I think it's Riemann. His name is Bernard Riemann. You want to see a picture? I think I have a picture up here. Let's look. Oh, I do. He's a stern-looking man, isn't he? Poor guy died when he was 40. All right. Um, he came up with the idea of a Riemann sum. Yeah, just one m, two n's. I always screw that up. So Riemann sum. Let's get big again. One m, two n's. I typically write the e before the i too, but so one m Riemann sum. 
And there's a fancy way to write this. Now, I want you to think about this for a sec. What did we do? We took the sum of a bunch of rectangles, right? That's all we did in all of these problems. Took some rectangles here. We took some sums of rectangles back here as well, right? That's all that we did. However, we're going to write this in such a crazy way. Now, let's, I'm going to write it out first, and then let's see if you, if you trust what I say. I'm going to let I go from 1 to n, and I'm going to take f of x sub i, and I'm going to multiply it times delta x. Now look closely at what this means, because this looks pretty nasty. All right? Does this imply that I added up rectangles? Well, look at this. What does this f, f of x sub i mean? Well, that was just the height. Remember, back here, these are just my f of right here, and right here, and right here, and right here, and up here. That was the height of the rectangle at my ith sub interval. That's pretty awesome, huh? Th what's this guy? Remember this? This is just my width. So really, this just means add it up. Add it up. So it says add up a bunch of widths and heights of what? Rectangles. Widths times heights which gives me areas. Now, what if I want to know the exact area underneath a curve? What do I do? I take the limit as n goes to infinity. So the area, let me rewrite it without all the zippy stuff, is the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum as i goes from 1 to n of f of x sub i times delta x. I love this equation because it makes us look so smart. But really, it just says to add up a bunch of rectangles. How many? Uh, a lot. But that's all it says. Okay. In class, we are going to do a f You're going to hate me for this. Kind of like you hated me for forcing you to do uh, derivatives by hand initially. But we're going to do a few of these because it really is a good uh, mental exercise. We're going to... Excuse me. Ooh, big yawn. Um, we're going to do some of these by hand. And then hopefully that'll give you an appreciation of, of how they really work when we start using shortcut -y type stuff. Hey, welcome to what is commonly known as integral calculus. We're done with uh, differential calculus, although we're going to be haunted by derivatives probably until the day we die. Have a really good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.